Finally, the moment a couple of you have been waiting for. It's all like bing bong, Jack. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in Duval and St. John's County. The show for Jag fans by Jag fans. You can't have a newcomer come in and steal a show. Here are your hosts, Franklin and Michael De. How do you say it? DeZoba. Welcome to the Jaggernaut Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, well, not kids because I curse and my brother doesn't like that. I want to welcome you back to another Jaggernaut podcast. I'm your host, Michael. As always, got my brother Frank with me. Frank. Hello, fellow Jag fans. I, I want to start this off without being negative, but I'm having a hard time. We're, we're 0-4 in our last four games. And we just traded one of the guys who I absolutely loved on our team. Not only was he a good player, but he was a good player with a great story. And I'm starting to see a repeat pattern here of Jacksonville letting go of these these players for other players who are not necessarily better than them. Check Gardner, C.J. Beathard, right? So... See, I'm not saying C.J. Beathard's bad. I'm just saying that we had Gardner Minshew, and to me, there may be, what, 1A, 1B? What's the difference? We pay we pay Beathard a lot more, but what truly is the difference? Is there one? But I like Gardner Minshew's story. I liked his his uh, his attitude. You know, I, I like he seemed more personable to me, if that makes sense. So I like that. I was drawn into that. So I liked it. I still like him in uh, Philly, even though you don't hear anything about him there. So here we go. We lost James Robinson. Congratulations, Balky. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago I was saying maybe we owed Balky an apology. It's amazing how quickly we've gone 180 degrees from coming off of that Chargers victory. Everybody felt like a good team. And what I I know we're going to get into the Giant, <clears throat> Giants game in a little bit, but what the emphasis for me with the that this most recent loss, that team is us. That team's us. They were bad last year, and now they're good. It happens to other teams, but it doesn't happen to us. And that's the thing that's frustrating to us us to us jag fans is that there's absolutely no reason why we can't be that team that has the story that we thought we had coming out of the chargers game which is the metamorphosis i thought the team had i still think the team has talent in fact i would argue we have way more talent than the team that beat us i just think we do um but because we do what we do, and I thought it was over. I thought that things had changed. I thought there was a sea change. We brought a Super Bowl winning coach in, and we said, this to me is an indication uh, of all the things. we four, four win losing streak, and then they do this. And we haven't even got into the, to, to the fact that Doug, Doug Peterson, what he said before word came out that Robinson was released. But the fact that we released Robinson is a pattern with this organization, which is we don't keep good players. We find some reason to assume that the next guy is better. And whether it be contract, uh, disgruntled stuff, I don't know what Robinson's. Ex I don't know what the excuse is for Robinson. It's a big mystery. Uh, you're so we we have Snoop Connor, who's garbage. Who's, who's garbage. garbage? Like yeah, okay, I'm not saying he will remain garbage, but what there's no reason seen, to assume that what we've seen right now says he's garbage. There's he no reason. Nothing in the preseason. And people say, well, you know. He was an undrafted guy, and now we get a sixth, maybe even a fifth-round pick. And then I, 
I heard I was listening to uh, Dave Campo and uh, Joe Cowart. And Campo was like, well, people say six-round picks aren't any good. You can get six-round picks. It's like, yeah, you can, but this team uses them to trade up. And then we'll draft, and you know what will happen. We'll draft a linebacker. We'll draft a safety. We'll draft a corner. We've got, and we've got they'll, a special teams guy. They'll either, be, they'll either be a guy that will sit on the bench – so we're going to take a guy that could have been useful to actually move the ball, move the change, to get a guy that's going to sit the bench. Or or here's another scenario. We will also get rid of a free agent, or we'll get rid of another player, and then we'll need him to play. This is the And this is the reason why we continue the cycle where – we are going into the draft looking for starters. Teams shouldn't be doing that. Good teams aren't going to the draft looking for starters. They're looking for backups who can potentially be starters next year if they cut the mustard. But for us, we don't have enough players because no, there's and reasons is, we have to get rid of them all the time. And, and honestly, dude, this has been a pattern since we got rid of Tom Coughlin. You remember, You're right. You remember Daryl Smith, right? Yes. Daryl Smith was due up for his contract. We let him go four years before we should have because he played four years. For that Baltimore was Caldwell, wasn't it? And was still um, – that might have been Shaq Harris. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm not 100% sure on who it was, but that's going back probably 15, 15 to 20 years. You know, and I, again – all I wanted was a clean slate. I asked for a clean slate. We didn't get that. We we kept bulky. What I'm going to tell you is the same thing I keep repeatedly telling you, and I've told you this multiple times on this podcast. We are going to be perennial losers because our owner simply doesn't give two shits. He is not interested in winning football games. He has an NFL franchise because he's rich and because he's a foreigner, and that's what he wants. No offense. I know people may get upset with that, but that's true. He's in the big boy leagues. That's how you say you've arrived. I own an NFL franchise. I'm one of 32 I've arrived. Yeah, and it and doesn't matter how they perform. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter right. how the fans feel. Dude, oh, man, like, I, I don't know. This one, this one just – because Robinson seemed like a good guy from all intents and purposes, from everything I heard around town, everybody that's had an interaction with him or his family, it was always positive. Always positive. And the guy was a good player, was a solid good player, and we jagged it up like we always do. The thing that bothers me is I don't understand the football aspect of it. This is what bothers me the most. I, I don't care. Look, this is a game. Your point about it being a good guy is something that is worthy of mentioning, but we let – Good guys come and go in this league because there are reasons. Either they can't play or they've, uh, you know, the contract issues or they used to play and can't anymore, whatever. That doesn't seem to fit here. And people can say, well, he was injured. Okay, but he was on his rookie deal. There's There was no financial reason. We have to have the six-round pick. It's like so that pick people, is irrelevant to us. What, what people are saying is that he would have been an unrestricted free agent after this year and that we had no intentions on keeping him or re-signing him because we would have had to have paid because I believe some team would have, would have came and would have offered him probably a decent contract, something we probably should have got him this year or sometime. And, and basically he would have been gone and we would have got nothing for him. You know what we would have got for him? We would have got a solid football player for the rest of this damn season. Does this season not matter anymore? I know. Let's I have know. a fire cell. Hey, Josh Allen, let's get you out of here because you really that's, only show that's, up part time. You dude, only show that's up the part, guy that's next. I'm telling you. That's yeah, the I guy mean, that's but next. He, but he only shows up part time. I know. And he'll go so, to another so team. So while we're sitting here talking about Balky, let's not forget that he drafted Walker. Who so far, he doesn't look like a number one pick. No. I'm not saying he possibly can't be that, but I'm saying right now he doesn't look like that. No. No, he's clearly he not. He he doesn't show up when you need him. He 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 
he is Taven Bryan at this point. He's a strong guy who is lost out there. Like you, you just don't, you don't see him very often. Like, what is he doing? Okay, I guess people run around him. All right, he's not. Is he making tackles? I don't see him making. I don't even see him making a lot of tackles. I mean, so anyway, that's why it's hard to root for this franchise. Because, it is hard to root for the franchise because, this, because this, they're constantly just thumbing. They're just doing stuff that's baffling and for no reason. I don't even know what the P. Here's the thing, too. Here, here's the other aspect of it. So, Doug Peterson comes out and says that Robin. They ask him like, "What's what's the deal with you? Didn't play Robinson much?" And he comes out and says that he is in our future plans to 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 get him uh you know involved mm -hmm. well then you trade him hours later that is a bad pr yeah, situation so even 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 if you said as the gm of the team as the coach of the team that you know we could justify trading robinson because you think this is a fair deal uh, we're really getting a oh I can't believe the Jets are willing to trade us I don't know what you think I don't know why you think this six it can't be that great when you trade them away to move up all the time that's what bulky does so I don't know how you justify that this is some amazing value when you're when you're justifying it to yourself or to the fans and then but when you have come out and put yourself out there and said Robinson is in our plans I don't understand how you then go, you know, maybe we just not do this right now. Uh, let's just hold off on trading this guy. I, I kind of said, even if you made a mistake, maybe I should have never said it. Just don't make the trade, man. It's so not either, worth it. So either bulky, either this came up later on after that press conference and it was quick, bang, bang. Bulky didn't tell him. Yeah. Or Doug Peterson lied. I mean, they're, so they're no good options. Yeah, no good no, options. None of those are good. I none mean, I guess good. coming up after Never. there, but that's all that. But hell, if he lied about that, how do we know if he comes out and said, "Well, hey, when I left this press conference, he was on our team. He was. I didn't know anything yeah. about it." Then, how do we know that's not a lie? I mean, at this point, can we really trust whatever he says? Well, he smiles. He talks about ice cream. You know. Yeah. He won a Super Bowl for some other team. Some other city got a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, and so, you know what? That that Super Bowl's still paying him. Congratulations to you, but you right now aren't doing shit in Jacksonville, and neither's your team. And like I said, the uh, play calling is suspect now. I, I'm I'm not I'm not a big fan of 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 what we're doing. I I don't really understand. Like, and 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 forget the play calling for a moment. What about the culture that you've brought? Um. You got a pro you got a problem here, and I, I and and that game exemplified that problem, because the culture that the Giants have is one of we like to win games, and the culture that we see on display is we don't give a crap, because and I don't care what is said in the locker rooms because all that's garbage. I'm tired of hearing we're just we're better than this. Uh, we just gotta. Uh, do what we, we know we're capable win. of. We gotta learn all how this to win. Garbage, because yep. it's like, guess what? You, yeah, I think you guys are capable of it too. Um, I'm capable of mowing the yard, but if I lay my butt on the couch and play video games, the yard's not going to get cut. Okay, I don't give a crap what you're capable of, capable of. We saw a team in the Giants that has done all year what they've been doing. So there's a pattern. Where in the fourth quarter, they find a way to win. What we do, we find a way to lose. We will find a way to lose. You Think about all the games we've lost. There's always some weird thing that's happened. Some well, what, awkward penalty, some bonehead me, fumble. Just nonsense it, all over the place. It almost always starts with like a fumble. Yeah. Take ETN's fumble, right? So let's let's segue. Let's forget Robinson. We're going to segue right into the game. A lot of people say that that Trevor came up a yard short. No, ETN's fumble 
very well, very well could have cost us that game. Because it, it, at that point, we could have rolled in, right? What would it have been, 20 to 14? We would have put the pressure back on them. We didn't do shit, nothing. Yeah. They went back down, kicked a field goal. That I think they ended up tying it or it was 16, 13. I mean, it just – it went from there. Instead of putting the pressure on them, we fumbled, we lost the ball, and what happened? It's still damn a dog fight. We can't get out of our way, and for us, it starts with something like that, and then it just snowballs, like a penalty. So Lloyd gets an interception. But, oh, beautiful Aluacon. Woo! Man, let's headbutt the quarterback because that's not going to get called today's NFL. Let's do that. That's what we need to do. Way to go, Aluacon. Now let's put Aluacon in there with, with Walker, right, who's got two personal fouls. On two, three, and longs, and what happens? They move the ball, they go down, they score. Two linebackers, both making mistakes. I don't understand it. We're we're playing the Giants, right? Daniel Jones can run, and I'm not trying to take anything away from his athletic ability. But the man's Ophi. It isn't Lamar Jackson back then. Right? He's not gonna, he's not gonna juke you out of your cleat. How do you play the option, Frank? You make the quarterback declare. If he gives the ball up, you chase down the ball. If he doesn't, you take him. But you make him declare. You stay in your spot on that corner and make him declare. Yeah. You know what we made him to what we made Daniel Jones declare? That he is a hundred yard rusher. Woo! Way to go, Duval. It's what it speaks to, and people can People can say whatever they want to, and this is something I've noticed too now. The players, they put a mic in front of the players, and the players say, uh, we're, we're capable, um, we know how what we're capable of, this isn't, you know, uh, we're, we just got to get back to whatever, you know, the same old trite that we always hear. And I don't. I'm not blaming them. I don't know what you would say at this point. I, honestly, I don't want to hear anything from them at this yeah. point. It's really. What we I, need a reporter say. Didn't you say that last week? Yeah. What was the difference between last week and this week? Then, you lost then, both of them. then the coaches come out and they say, "No, it's us." And then you listen to the media when the pl- fans go, "Hey, it's actually the coaches," and then the media comes and protects the coaches. So nobody, everybody's shifting the blame around, and the blame just gets shifted around. Um, guess what? It is the coaches. Actually, does anything? It is the coaches. It's the coaches because guess what? You have undisciplined players, and they're not giving you. You can justify some undisciplined behavior at times if you're aggressive, and that aggression is causing penalties. And are causing uh, turnovers and actually move, you know, stopping the offense. When your defense is Swiss cheese and you have undisciplined people, th- th- 10 players on the field, that happened. They had to call a timeout. Remember that? Yep. Uh, they got hit for the penalty for 12 men on the field. So. What you're seeing is a mismanagement taking place. Um, the coach, maybe he doesn't need to call plays. I don't know. I mean, at times, it it looks so efficient. It looks so great. And then there are, there are times when it breaks down, and I'll tell you why it breaks down. It's because there's mismanagement in time. You sit there and you call a timeout. Wrong play. Uh, wrong formation, the coach sees it, whatever, you don't know. And we talked about this. I don't have a problem with it per se, but you better come back and you better have you better have some success and I better see what you're attempting to do. When you come out and you throw a behind-the-line lateral pass for nothing, and that was what you called a timeout for, to get that in, I have a problem with that because you're, as a fourth as a coach that's known for going for it on fourth, you also know, understand that you're going to be judged by that when you fail. You're going to be castigated for it. And when you succeed, everybody's going to laud you. You know that going into it. When you call a timeout, you better come back with something. 
and 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 all those wasted timeouts when the co and the, the refereeing in this game was was the worst refereeing it I've seen bad. in any Jaguar game this year. See, I I almost don't want to say that because that that gives them a well. Yeah, well, it, we would have lost anyway, and that's okay. it, that's important to say that. But 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 here's where the ref and the bad coaching come into play. Because you wasted your timeouts. You had one timeout left. You knew you were likely going to need it because you were behind. And then you throw a pass to Christian Kirk that gets a first down. And for some reason, the refs didn't think it was a first down and, and lined it up like half a yard short. And then you don't think to, I mean, what are you going to do? And this is something we've seen. Like last game, I think he did the same crap where it looked like we had the first down and they didn't give it to us instead of worrying about it, instead of going through the process, instead of throwing a red flag, he decided we're just going to get it. Well, we'll go for it. Well, I don't know if he's watched his offensive line. His offensive line isn't very good at doing that. When the defense knows you need one yard, they stop you. Probably at a clip of like 80% so far. I don't know what the numbers are, but I'm guessing we probably are successful 20% of the time. There's been a couple sneaks that I can think of and a couple runs, but he goes for it on fourth a lot. So he's missed a lot of fourth down, fourth down, fourth and one, fourth and short attempts. And what I, my point is, is that he, oh, he's going to go for it. He's, he's so aggressive. He's so aggressive. Well, maybe don't be aggressive with your timeouts if you're going to be that way. Maybe, maybe you got to think about that. Because when you're wasting your timeouts on mundane nonsense plays and making sure those go in, you're then causing yourself not to want to throw the challenge flag when the ref's clearly screwing you. Because then ETN runs, and to me, I know everybody's saying, well, he could have he could have taken it to the house. Okay, fine. I don't care. He got the first down, though. That's the thing. And it's like... It, some people are saying they didn't go. Oh, whatever. I want to see it. I, I want to... Uh, to me, it looked like we got the first down twice, and they kept giving it to us short. We got stopped three times at that one-yard marker, and we look like idiots for it. And that's... It's demoralizing to the fan base, and it's demoralizing to the team. And the whole reason it happened, in my opinion, is because... You waste timeouts. It's like flippantly throwing uh, timeouts for no reason in the first half. All right, I can get it. You're in the third quarter. Why are you throwing a timeout for stuff like that? Why are we wasting timeouts because your defense isn't in the right, right formation or doesn't have the right men on the field? Coaching. The coaching has got to improve and that's the difference. We got Brian Dayball, who's his first head coaching job, and he's doing an amazing job. And we go and get a Super Bowl quarter uh, coach, and we think, how dare Jag fans think we'll get good coaching from a guy who's went all the way and won the Super Bowl? We got a a, a, a Super Bowl winning head coach, a generational prospect. We've got. Uh, multiple first-round draft picks on the team, a ton of players that we brought in on free agency. My God, can we have an average season with all that? We can't even get that. It's like that we're not even asking for much, and 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 that exemplified it. They just grabbed a guy from the from. You know, let's get this fat guy from the who was around Josh Allen. I don't know how good Josh Dabo is. Apparently, he's really damn good though. I, but you've seen it before where you got these co coaches or quarterbacks that make these coaches. We got a guy that's supposed to be a proven commodity, and he's getting out coached now week in and week out. I concur, sir. I have nothing else to add to that. We got our ass whooped by the Giants. It starts at Doug Peterson. I'll go a little bit further, say it starts at Shad Khan. If Shad Khan, if it's me, I'm having Doug Peterson in my office. And I'm saying, what the? Yeah. What the f? I'm. I want the whole staff in there. I want to look. I want to look at our defensive coordinator and ask, what are you doing? Yeah. What What is like, this what, scheme? Like, how are your linebackers are always out of position? The dude played linebacker. He played hey, linebacker. How are you? How are your linebackers this talented and this sucky? Hey. 
this is Jacksonville, or should I say, this is Duval. You know, almost like they they say this is Sparta, but not in a good way. How many times have we had a coach come in here, Doug Marone? It was an offensive line guy. We said, why does our offensive line suck? Year after year. It doesn't it doesn't matter what what type of coach he what what kind of player he played, what position. It doesn't matter. This is Duval does something to people. I'm telling you, it, they either come here to retire or they just come here to get money to um, put a better resume together for other teams. Because damn sure we're not keeping anybody. That that is right. that is my biggest frustration, and and that is why I get so worked up. And this game exemplified. This was this was probably of all the frustrating losses. This was probably the most frustrating loss for me uh, because of what it demonstrated about our team and the pattern that we have started i don't have any faith at all anymore that this team because it talent doesn't matter coaching record uh experience resume uh hope optimism all that stuff in regards to optimistic talent acquisition doesn't matter the things that work for other teams don't work for us I don't know why that is. Um, I'm getting a little tired because I tr I do my best. I do my best to th I, I I I think of myself as an analytical person and not a superstitious person. But I'm like, what the hell kind of curse is on this team? Like, is it possible we're cursed? Do curses I think exist, so, man? I don't even understand this. It's weird. Like, I how can so, we be this bad what else, again? What else could it be? Countless GM. Countless head coaches, countless quarterbacks, countless this, countless that, countless water boys, and we still suck. What's our record this year? What are you th What are you guessing right now? Uh, I actually think we're going to be in the running for the first round draft pick again. Yeah. Now that's that that is a type of record that the Jaguars will go get. Like we won't go get like a twelve win season. And no nope. boy. First overall pick, three years in a row, unprecedented in the in modern NFL. Who can do it? We can do it. And here's the we thing. We damn sure can do it. Here's the amazing thing about that. Last year, we saw a team that needed a lot of work talent-wise. When I look at this team, this is not a bad talented team. This team has talent. That's the thing that's frustrating. We find a way to lose. Like, it's our mission to lose. We can acquire talent and put it on the field, and we will mismanage it with people who are supposedly good managers. It's like, we will find a way. And I don't understand. It's a different way we're losing this year than last year. And people are using that as like the moral victory. They're like, well, this is a better team, and we're moving the yeah, ball and you, all this stuff. I'm like, better. that you almost makes losing. it worse. Yeah. Yeah, you that almost makes losing. it worse. Because last year we were like, well, I can see our issues. And, I, and if we acquire the right talent and then going into this season, I thought, OK, it's not exactly how I would have done it, but I can see what they're doing. And they've definitely added to the talent. And we have a base for an eight and eight season. That was all I was thinking. I wasn't thinking we have a we have the makings of a three and 14 team. Yay. Like. <laughs> That's what we were last year with with the with less talent. So how and Urban Meyer. I know that's what I mean. And 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 we chalked it up to a lot to Urban Meyer. But again, the whole Urban Meyer is a perfect example. What other franchise does that? They go out and get that guy. And it goes to your point about Shad Khan, the absent-minded, uh, absentee I'm landlord not, I'm not type guy. On, I'm not getting on Shad Khan about that because when they when they announced Urban Meyer, I thought that might actually be a really good hire. I wanted somebody out of the box. I didn't want retreads, you know. So I thought Urban Meyer may be that guy. I was wrong. I was way wrong. Urban Meyer, I don't know how the hell he's coaching anywhere. But he's going to get another job, and I don't know how. That dude cannot evaluate talent. Again, we I said this last year, or this what this past week with the Carlos Hyde. If you think Carlos Hyde's a good running back last year, dude, you're you're delusional. He was not a good running back. Well, here here's the issue. What we were saying last year, don't 
Don't play Carlos Hyde. What are you doing, you idiot? You've got James Robinson in the backfield. And what did we just do? We, who needs James Robinson? We've got Travis Etienne. And, he, and here's what I'm worried about, because this is typical Jaguar. This is Don't like, say it. Don't say it. I know what you're going to say. Something's going to happen. And, and then no more ETN. You know what? Right? I'm going to say it because I don't give a crap anymore. It doesn't matter because it, I'm not superstitious. And even if I am, I'm not changing anything. Because even if my whole idea of, of just trying to look at this team as a team that can turn it around because that's what things are do, done. That's how things are done. Look at the Giants. It happens. It isn't a jag thing. It isn't we suck. It we're always suck thing. I don't believe that. I've been doing that, so you know what? I, you know why? I, say it, it doesn't matter one way or the it. other. Just say it. High ankle Just sprain. It. High ankle sprain. Something like that's coming for ETN. That's what's going to happen. It probably this week. Probably this oh, week. And then, then we get to bring up Snoop Connor. Then, yeah, and then we'll, the we'll get all the we'll get a great we'll we'll get a great reason for why we went three and thirteen again, and why yeah. we got the first pick overall. I mean, I don't know. Texans Woo! Texans may go to te Texans may go two and uh two and fifteen and save us the embarrassment of yeah. Uh, well, too bad. Too bad they only play us twice. That's what I mean. That's that. That's the two. That's the two wins they'll have. Will be us. And they'll get the first round pick, and they'll save us from the embarrassment. Although it'll just save us from getting the first round pick, we'll still be looked at as the worst team, probably. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, yeah. It's, it's. Uh, All right. Speaking the more of that, I talk about keep... it, the more frustrated yeah. I get. Yeah. So let's just stop there. Let's and I assume most the fans Broncos. are the way we are. Let's talk about the Denver Broncos. So Frank, man, once again, Vegas has us as a four point favorite. What the hell? So I don't even, I don't even, I don't even, I don't, I think Vegas got us completely wrong. But here's what I'm going to say. Melvin Gordon, he's had issues, right? He goes over 100 yards this game. Russell Wilson, he has issues. 300 yards, three touchdowns. Yeah. That's my prediction. Those are the elements for the Denver Broncos. That's what we're going to take care of. Yeah, and I think the fact that if I if I'm the owner if I was the owner of the Jaguars, I would come to the coaches and I would say, "Have you guys noticed that the Colts benched Matt Ryan, and yet last week when he played us, he almost threw for 400 yards? Did you guys see that story?" And I'd just turn around and walk away, because. That to me, and I'm, I almost, I, I wonder, and I'm, my guess is nobody will with the Jacksonville media, and I've been so pissed I haven't won, wanted to really watch anything. My, the media should ask that question. Like, how bad is the defense? Does it, does this give you pause for what's going on in the defense? And they need to get Caldwell up there, and they need to ask him this question. Your defense let a guy, throw for 300 yards and four touchdowns, th almost 400 yards and four touchdowns, and that guy just got benched because he couldn't do it against anyone else. Does that mean anything to you? Does that cause you pause? It's, I don't know. I, it, 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 the, everything that, it, it's just an interesting season, but, of all the changes and things that have happened in the the general uh, league, the as a whole, the one thing that has stayed the same is we are still the Jaguars. And it, for a second, for a moment, and and it's sad because you could tell the nation was rooting for us for a minute. They they after that Chargers game, they they were really trying to pick us up and go, oh this. You know, looking this for that Cinderella story. This is a different team. This is a different Jacksonville team. And we, and then we what almost, did we, do? we 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 went with it for a little bit. You know, we yeah. let ourselves get uh, carried away with the possibility that we, because it it it's illogical to think that it couldn't be us. I mean, you think about it. What did the Giants do? They haven't done anything in the off season to justify a five and one start. 
I don't know. But where are the Jags? I don't know, brother. And, and as far as, like, what's your confidence that we're going to win? Like, it, it, I think the problem, with, the problem with Vegas, to your point, to answer your question, the problem with Vegas is Vegas is doing analytics. They're not doing what – they're not doing real world. And apparently in the real world, the Jags are always going to be the Jags. No, I mean – I think I think uh, analytically we have probably a hundred percent probability that one of these three things is going to happen. Trevor Lawrence is going to throw a pick. Etn is going to fumble. Yeah. Or one of our linebackers is going to have a rough in the passer call on a third and forty, and we're going to give them a first down. They're going to take the ball down and score. That's going to change the whole dynamics of the game. And from that point on, we're always going to be playing catch up. And Lord knows we have such a hard time beating the opponent. We can't beat the opponent and ourselves. We can't beat the opponent and the refs. We can't beat the opponent and weather. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I don't think we'll win at all. Like I said, the Broncos could use a win. We'll give it to you. That's what we do. That's all to you. Yeah. Um, and I get why Vegas has us ahead because it's a London game. So we're used to oh, it. You know, another problem they have, like Hackett is being is the laughing stock of the NFL. Yeah. He is going to come out and he is going to call a perfect game, like a no hitter. Yeah. Against us. Yeah. Hasn't done it to any other team. But man, every play will be the right play against the right defense at the right time. And when it's not, one of our linebackers will make sure that we get a personal foul, and it will be. Yep. I don't know really what to say. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Well, we'll, till, we'll visit you. We'll, we'll visit, visit you, you on, next on week. The, on the next loss to explain. Maybe they'll trade somebody else away. We'll talk about Maybe that. what we need to do is the next time, Frank, I'm going to start researching spirituality and football. And see if maybe I could figure out, you know, it's the Chicago Cubs. They wouldn't let this old dude in with a goat back in like 1902. And they couldn't win. It took them, what, a hundred and something years to win. I can't because remember. Of the goat. I can't remember because the story. Goat. And it might you might be able to find it on Google, but I think it has something to do with Rasheen Mathis' grandma. Um, I heard somebody say something about that. Uh, or or his mom. Something, something happened to her vehicle. I, I don't know. It was real shady what happened to her outside of stadium, I heard. Um, but for, somebody explained it to me on Twitter, and I had no, I was not aware. Uh, but if you go back, ever since then, we have been absolutely abysmal. abysmal. And maybe, maybe that's what it is. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Jags fans need to figure oh. out what transpired and how we can make it right with karma or the gods or Rasheen's mother or whatever. Because I'd be all about throwing in 30, 40, 50 bucks to get this woman a car or to say we're sorry or you know, sign a card that says we are sorry. You know, please remove your curse from us. Yeah. Right. Because it does seem like something's going on. All right. Well, until next time, we'll see you again after we lose to the Denver Broncos. Woo! Oh, and what? I think the trade deadline's coming up. Look for Josh Allen to be on the move. Yeah. Might as well. Incremental, uh, incremental rebuilds. That's 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 Duval. Until next time. <laughs>